family. Welcome to the first episode of Your Work Auntie podcast, where I will be sharing some career tips in this episode um, to help you all in your job search uh, out here. In this episode, I want to talk about something I feel like many, many people overlook when they're preparing for the job search, which is preparing your references. I cannot tell you how many times I have been asked to be a reference for someone that I do not know, I barely remember, and really didn't work with, and the person was upset or surprised that I was not willing to be a reference for them. So I want you all to not have that experience and to really put this as part of your preparation process when you know, you're preparing your resume, when you're preparing that cover letter, which we'll talk about, not a fan, but while you're doing these things, you know, do that, that interview preparation, et cetera, because you're going to knock that interview out the park because you've prepared. You want to make sure that you also consider the following tips and stories when you're trying to prepare your references. So you want to choose references that have Actually worked with you right they know you from something in a capacity where they could see how you actually work so I'm not saying they need to have been a co-worker from an actual job from when you worked in KFC or you know at any other employer what I am saying is they need to be able to speak to how you work and so that could be someone that you know from school perhaps they participated on project teams with you in certain classes or they were a part of a student organization, you know, where you were a very active member, you know, in that organization. So they can definitely talk to, you know, how you manage projects, your level of contributions, and even any technical skills that you may have. But again, you do not want to choose your classmate that you know from freshman year and you live in the same dorm, but they've never actually attended classes with you. Um, I went to a technical school. And so while I went to a technical school, I was in the political science career track. And very often I would have some, uh, you know, other students who were in the engineering tracks ask me to be references. And I, I did not. How? We were in student orgs together. Um, you know, we I didn't know them. So in those situations, I often declined. Um, I even once had someone, a colleague's child asking me to be a reference and I sort of knew their child, but definitely I wasn't as great of a reference as I would be had I gotten some more information about that person or actually worked with them. Um, so in addition to choosing people that you've gone to school with, you can also choose people that you go to church with or that you participate in a religious organization with. Because again, you want someone that could speak to how you communicate, how you solve problems, and whether or not you have any unique or special skills. So maybe on your current job, you're not playing the drums or designing websites or leading programs or events, but you do it at church. That is still a valuable reference that you definitely want to take advantage of. So again, does not have to be a coworker from an actual job with a paycheck. It could definitely be from other social aspects of your life. And you definitely want to use people from current or previous employers if you have. But if you're a student or someone who's had a break in work um, or, or you spend a lot of time in these orgs, you really do want to use people that can speak to your capacity from um, those those areas of your life. Another area to consider is volunteering. So just like student orgs, you want people that can speak to your ability to manage projects, take on leadership roles, you know, manage funds or whatever skills you need them to highlight for that job. So don't get uh, discouraged if you don't have many coworkers because you have limited work experience or you perhaps worked in an isolated capacity. Maybe you were freelancing for a long time. Use people from other aspects of your life that could absolutely speak to your work. Um, because what I'm looking for as a hiring manager is people that could speak to your competence as well as, you know, your work ethic, as well as your capacity and your aptitude. So if you haven't done the work, do I feel like you've demonstrated the skills or the willingness to research, uh, be coachable um, or, or, you know, or ask the kind of questions that would allow me to trust you with the work. Right. So, again, choose people very wisely from actual places where they can speak to your work once you have decided on who those people are do not assume that they are going to be a good reference for you 
or that they would willing to be a good reference for you. So when you contact the person and ask them, because you should ask, are you willing to be a reference for me? You should expect an honest answer and then use that to your advantage to choose the right people to provide great stories about you. If someone is an honest person, and I hope the people you surround yourself with all happens to be, they will tell you whether or not they can be a good reference. And that reason could be anything from I just don't remember, it's been so long, or I don't think I can speak highly of your work. So again, be prepared for that response. It may not be positive. It may not be what you wanted to hear, but it's good information for you. Just adding someone's number or name to an application package because you have it without letting them know and confirming definitely can result in you not getting a position. So don't do that. <laughs> Choose wisely. Although you worked with someone and they like you and they want to be a reference and maybe even they offered. Does your reference reflect the kind of person you want your hiring manager to see you as? So if you're interviewing for an upbeat organization with a culture of joy and, you know, every, you know, they're more extroverted because there are some cultures where we really do celebrate and hire extroverts and you choose your more reserved not very articulate um, reference who can't really explain things very well and not to any necessarily fault of their own. They may not just be great in doing so. Like they may be better in like social settings, et cetera. You may not want to choose them, you know? So even though they may have the right title, they may have the actual experience. You again want to choose someone that is a great representative of you. You also want to choose someone that will not say things that have your potential manager looking at you a bit sideways. I can't even recall exactly what the person said, but I remember I was trying to make a decision between three candidates that were very close. And so the differentiator for me deciding whether or not I would hire them really was the references because it, it, they were very close and I couldn't make a distinguishable difference really out of the interviews. I thought either of the three can go the other way. I remember though that speaking to the reference made me question this person's whole like thought process because the reference was clearly unprepared and actually lacked professionalism. And when I say professionalism, I just want to be clear that I am not talking about respectability politics and I don't care if someone says ain't and this or whatever else. I am not talking about that. I don't care if your reference has an accent. And honestly, if your your hiring manager is the kind of person who does care about that, save yourself, right? Don't work for them anyway. But what I'm talking about again is just the kind of language they choose to use, not how they speak, not what accents they have, uh, not their pronunciation. And like myself, as many of you will notice, I myself have an accent from living several places and also being from the Gullah Geechee, Geechee community originally in South Carolina. So I'm not talking about that. I'm just really talking about someone that could bring the same kind of energy, positivity and light that you would like to bring to that role. So again, not all of your potential contacts may be the best fit for the roles you're looking for. Also important in your preparation of your references is making sure they know that they should be expecting calls. So you should reconfirm your references. If you're in the job hunt for more than say like six months or a year, or you start searching for a job again a year or two later, you definitely want to reconfirm your references. But once you nail that interview, right, you've nailed that interview, the hiring manager reaches out to you and says, hey, I need three to five references or whatever amount they need. Let your references know that someone will be contacting them. Because the last thing you want is your hiring manager playing phone tag with your potential reference or that your reference is screening the calls. We all screen calls, right? I get so many calls from timeshares and packs that I don't even know how they got my number and all sorts of different scams and other organizations. So if I see certain numbers, I don't generally answer. If they leave a voicemail, I'll listen and I may or may not call back. But you definitely want to say, hey, my recruiter or my, my hiring manager will be calling me, uh, calling you over the next you know, week or so. You know, what is your availability? 
Because before you respond to the hiring manager, you want to reach out to that reference. If the reference comes back to you and says, oh, no, I'm going to be in Japan for the next two weeks and in a different time zone, so I don't think I'll be the best person, you may want to choose another reference. And so you that's why you always want to confirm once you've sealed the deal on that interview. Once you've knocked it out, you let people know. While you're confirming that availability with the reference, if there is someone that is a key or very important reference or someone that, you know, you think the hiring manager really should speak to, you want to make sure they know if that person is difficult to reach. So they're already prepared because sometimes I'm hiring four to five positions at a time. And I'm trying to call all the references because I've done a series of interviews. It is very frustrating when I'm trying to reach the references and can't reach them. And I've set aside, you know, several hours to do this because of how tight my schedule is. And then, you know, it becomes, you know, after a while, it's like, what well, do I not choose this person because I couldn't reach the references? Usually I can't meet, reach one reference. I just call another uh, but there was a candidate where I could not reach any of their references. I did reach out to the candidate and say that and say, I can't reach any of your references. So can you let them know that I'll be contacting them? And they did follow up. And actually, the references called me back after, you know, trying. But not all hiring managers or recruiters are willing to do this. I mean, to be honest, sometimes people just get busy and even the best intended people just they also need to fill a job right so if you have a critical vacancy I don't want to spend a week chasing down your reference some organizations require reference checking so it's not even something that you can skip it's part of the hiring policy it's in the process and it absolutely must be done so again always make sure you find out the availability of the reference and you also communicate any concerns to your actual hiring manager um, if they need to call them like during odd hours, like after 5 or 6 p.m., if they need to be called on a weekend. I have checked references on a weekend uh, for certain candidates if they informed me that the person wasn't available. So definitely, um, you know, let your hiring manager or recruiter know um, so that they have all the information they need because the preparation for references goes both ways. You want to pre prepare your actual references, but you also want to prepare the hiring manager. And so even when you provide references, um, as we'll talk about later, you can provide many kinds of references. You also want to make sure you, they know who they're calling and what, you know, what capacity they know you in. Part of preparing your reference and something most of us don't do, and I didn't even start doing it until recently, until someone did it for me, and I realized how helpful it was when I got the call to be their reference. The two things this person shared with me was the job description or job announcement for the role they they applied for. And they shared their most recent resume. And in the email, they also included highlights of the things in their resume that related specifically to the job that they recommended, you know, they had for me that would help me provide this reference or be able to find examples if I was asked certain questions. So when the recruiter called, I was so ready. And I'm actually pretty good at speaking off the cuff and, and honestly feel like I could have given this person a good reference anyway, but the additional information allowed me to give a much better enthusiastic reference for this person. Um, and honestly, I gave such a great reference for them and could speak to the work so well that the recruiter was like, hey, if you're ever looking, <laughs> let me know. So again, it was so helpful. So I really want to encourage you all to do this as well when you are preparing again, because it's all preparation of pre preparing to get a new job. Send that resume, send that job announcement or that description. Speaking of that, if you're like me, when you're job hunting, you apply for 10, 20. Some people I've seen on LinkedIn even apply for 100 jobs at a time. So you may not actually remember what you have applied for. And you may not have the job announcement of what you've applied for. So I would recommend if you're applying for jobs, especially jobs on ex private sector websites, save every single job you apply to save the description. Save it as a PDF or save the web page or whatever, or print the page to a file document on your computer so that when you interview, you do have that document to share with your references. Sometimes after you've interviewed or even before you interview, you can ask the recruiter to send you the job announcement 
um, and they will provide that to you. But it's really helpful for yourself for preparation and your references if you can find that. If you are applying for a government job, all government jobs you apply for, you can always access the announcement, whether it's taken down or not. So um, you don't necessarily have to do that if you're on USA Jobs, but if you're applying for jobs on like say LinkedIn, Monster, a company website, they definitely do remove the announcements and you cannot get back to them um, later in most cases. Now, if you know of some hiring sites um, that do allow you to go back to the jobs outside of USA Jobs, please put it in the comments below. So speaking of preparation and knowing who your references are, I feel like this shouldn't have to be said, but given that I've experienced it and I've experienced it as a hiring manager, do not include your supervisor as a reference if your supervisor does not know that you are looking for jobs. For many reasons, many of us, have had situations where we have not told our supervisor that we were seeking employment. Um, it can range anything from you were not the best performer and you know they would not give you a good reference to, you know, fearing retribution from the supervisor because there are supervisors that will fire you or start looking for ways to penalize you once they determine that you're searching for a new job. So I completely get it. Your supervisor is not always going to be a reference, but they definitely should never be a reference if they don't know that you're looking. I know that some people wait until they have a surefire, like, oh, I'm probably definitely going to get this job, and, and they'll call you for a reference. Um, that's often when they'll tell their supervisor, and that's fine as well, but just make sure the supervisor doesn't find out you're seeking to leave their place of work from someone else. So let's talk a little more about when you have a problematic supervisor and you can't use them as a reference. I don't use my current supervisor as a reference, even if we have the best relationship ever. I feel like it creates concerns about leaving and what if you don't get the role, then they, you know, they feel like you're looking. So even if they're not the type of person that is purposefully vindictive, sometimes it does change the dynamic or they often start asking questions or having conversations about you leaving and, you know, it just becomes awkward. So I just don't use them. I just don't want to have that conversation until I'm sure I have an opportunity and I'm actually leaving, right? And I also am not the kind of person that looks for jobs to negotiate salary. If I'm looking, I'm leaving because I don't like wasting time, right? So um, for me, I just don't. But for some of you, you cannot use your supervisor because their supervisor is a problem. Your supervisor might be racist, classist, sexist, harassing, bullying, vindictive, um, just not a good supervisor overall. And so for whatever that reason is, think of who you can use. Is there a past supervisor that would be a better reference for you? Is there um, another team lead or second or third line supervisor that could speak to your work? Is there a supervisor of another section that you've worked with on projects or a detail at some point that you could list as your supervisor? So really think about that. And if, you're, um, if your hiring manager is insistent that you, you provide a current supervisor, be prepared. Again, preparation is key. Be prepared to share why you are not willing to use that supervisor. And, you know, you can work on something that's vague, that's, you know, hey, you know, there's some current ongoing issues with that supervisor and they're under investigation. Or, you know, I feel like including my supervisor will put my job in at jeopardy. So while I cannot provide you with their information, I have these other great references that could speak to my work. You know, I'm happy to share my performance plan or performance results to show you that it's not because I'm fearing a bad reference. It's just that, you know, I don't want to necessarily use that person. I have heard stories of supervisors that say they would provide a great reference and actually have um, sabotaged people because they didn't want them to leave their organization, which is very unfortunate. So I get it. Some of you don't want to use supervisors to reference. I do have colleagues that insist that it has to be the supervisor and I don't agree with it. But if you're a hiring manager, sound off in the comments on whether or not you insist on talking to current managers and tell me why. Um, you know, when people check references, all of us have our own beliefs and biases. And so maybe some of you can share something that I haven't thought of. But for me, I take whatever references I can get. And as long as the people have worked with you and can speak to your work, usually I'm happy. So 
when you think identify who's going to be your references. And I've talked about this a little bit before. You want to make sure you have up-to-date information. So again, when you are job hunting every, you know, six months, every year or so, you want to make sure you update that contact list so that the information you provide to the hiring manager or recruiter is correct. Because again, we don't have time to be chasing around some people to talk to for a reference. I would also recommend that if someone you chose as a reference has only given you their work contact information, so whether that's their desk number, work cell phone, work email, ask them for their personal information. People don't stay at companies forever. You know, I've been at six or seven jobs in the last, you know, 12, 13 years or however long. And so had I given someone my, you know, email when I was at PricewaterhouseCooper or something, they would not be able to reach me now for a reference or my contact information. So if someone's willing to be a reference, I, you know, I hope they would trust you with their personal contact information. So again, ask them for that. That's what you want to provide. If someone's only reachable via their work, you know, email or address, again, when you do, you're doing your confirmation and you have their personal contact info to ask, you would say, is this still your correct work, sex, work desk number? Is this the best way to reach you? Um, again, you want to make sure your references are giving you the best information and you want to make sure you get it to your hiring manager because, again, you do not want to lose a job because your hiring manager cannot reach your references and is tired and just needs to move on because, again, sometimes urgency impacts judgment. So everybody you choose um, needs to be a good reflection of you. But you can choose a variety of, and I actually recommend that you always have a variety of con of contacts for references. So, you know, you want to have your supervisors. You want to have your project or team leads if you have them. You want to have uh, teachers if you're a college student, you know, and your only real experience right now is maybe working on projects in college. Um, you could have TAs as well. Again, if you're a student, you want to make sure you also have peers, and so that might also be classmates. That could, again, speak to your work, how you fit into organizational culture, um, whether or not you're reliable, trustworthy, things like that. Because sometimes if you don't have the technical capability and we're more interested in aptitude, then it becomes about fit. And sometimes fit is really the the key thing. The only difference between you and another candidate may be fit. Like maybe they're better for the culture or the team environment. And so having that peer or classmate um, or sorority sister or fraternity brother reference might be the turning point or what makes your resume or your application stand out over other similarly suited candidates. If you are a supervisor or a team lead or, or a project manager, you definitely want subordinates or team members. You want people that could speak to your leadership style, how you coach, how you mentor, and whether or not they would follow you somewhere else. If I'm interviewing for a team lead or supervisory role, I always contact the subordinates. I want to know how they discipline, um, how, how you get performance or feedback, are you, are you providing good, good career counseling? Are you a good career coach? One of my big things is I'm career first over, I'm career over me. So whatever I need to do to support you as an employee to make sure you're ready for your career, I make sure I support you. So that's whatever training, conferences, anything that's within budget that you need to go to in order to advance, I'm going to support that. And so I try to hire supervisors that think that same way as well. I don't want to treat you all, my people, just like cattle and we're just pushing you through and not actually training you to be, you know, for my role or whatever role you would want in the future. So I often hire for that. So it's often why I like to talk to peers, I mean, sorry, subordinates um, as that. So again, your references don't always have to be supervisors. It can be a combination of. I always recommend sending at least three to five references with that combination. And earlier, I spoke to letting the hiring manager know what capacity it is. So when I send references upon request, I will I will say these are supervisors. Here's some peers and here's subordinates. And I'll list one or two names under each category so that when the reference calls them, they know what kind of questions to ask and how they can possibly be engaged. So again, the part of that preparation, have that document ready to go, whether you keep it in a Google file, a Word document, or 
or if it's an email you sent yourself, you definitely want to always have that breakdown ready. And again, like I said, if you are in the job market and you are hunting, you want to hit someone up to say, hey, are you still available? And crazy enough, because the world is so crazy and we had a whole pandemic, right? People die. Um, and so your reference may not actually be on this earth anymore. And I know that's morbid, but, you know, in six months, a lot can happen our year. So if you haven't talked to someone in a long time, you may want to follow up and find out, like, if they're living, doing well. And also just to maintain good networks. You don't want the only time that you've talked to this person is every two or three years when you're looking for a job. And you're like, hey, I need you to be a reference from when I worked here. So, again, just every six months for your own um, relationship maintaining and to update that list. Follow up to make sure you still have the best contact information. So be selective of the people you choose because they're a reflection of your judgment. So again, like I said, you want to choose people that can speak professionally to you as well. But you also want to at least prepare people if you're faking the funk. I cannot tell you how many times that I or my colleagues have spoken to people that were clearly a friend or family member pretending to be a supervisor or a peer. So if you're going to play games, then you really need to get it together and make sure they can at least speak to your work and the role or the industry that you work in. Because the worst is when you're talking to someone that clearly doesn't work in the same industry. And so they can't even fake the funk. And the answers are very vague and inappropriate. Um, and I'm not saying do this, but if you're going to do it, just do it right. That's all I'm going to say. Like, you know, but if, if I find out and many managers are this way. If I find out that you falsified your application in any way, including false references, I probably would, you know, consider removal because I can't trust you. So if you are going to do that, prepare them correctly, but do so at your own risk. Do not say your work Auntie Collada told you to do so because I did not. So let's talk about government jobs again. Government resumes are crazy. Like they ask for so much more information than you would put on a private sector resume, including your supervisor's name and contact information. But there is also an option if you use the USA Jobs Government Builder to indicate do not contact. One, I recommend designing your own resume. But if you do use the builder, definitely choose do not contact if you do not want me to contact your supervisor. If your supervisor is not aware that you are looking for employment, you don't want me to contact them. If your supervisor is not going to give you a great reference, you do not want me to contact them. So either do not include their contact information or put do not contact. I had a situation where I was trying to decide between a candidate and um, a couple other candidates and they were very close and I liked them for different reasons. And so I did something I normally don't do. I very rarely check multiple references um, to decide. Usually I've already decided in the reference checking, it's very much a formality. But occasionally I'll have hiring decisions where the candidates are really close and um, the hiring panel and myself, we can't really decide. We're just like, I, I don't really know between person A, B, and C. So I'm checking references for this person and none of them were really that strong or really answering the questions in a way that was like adding value. But I still like the person and so I pulled out their resume again, and I noticed that I knew a former supervisor. And the supervisor, and it, and it didn't say do not contact. So what did I do? I contacted that former supervisor. And they gave me the most negative reference where they literally said almost nothing that I've ever heard. During the reference check, Anytime I would ask a question about the employee's performance, that former manager would say things like, I'm not comfortable saying, I don't really know. You should really talk to this other person. They really didn't work for me. I mean, they're a nice person, but I just don't know. And so it was 20 minutes or so. And after that, we sort of switched to catching up and me finding out how they're doing. But it was very clear that this person was not a top performer or someone I wanted to have in my organization. Because if you call someone out the blue and, and you know, and, and we'll talk about how the world is so small, if someone performed well or made a major impact, whether they supported you directly or not, you would be comfortable giving them a reference. The same candidate, I was actually in another conversation with someone completely unrelated because I was telling them how surprising, how surprised I was by this reference that I got or non-reference that I received. 
And they also knew the person I spoke to. And then they said, are you talking about this particular person? And they also happened to know that employee. And they proceeded to confirm without me asking the hesitations that I was hearing in the voice that this employee was not a great employee and would not be a good fit. So this really just takes me to my last point of like the world is so small. People do informal reference checks all the time and they may reach out to people in the organization that they know and you may actually never hear about it. In some states, there's rules and laws about what your references can say and, you know, and things like that. And people try to adhere to those. But, you know, when people are talking to someone within their network and they know it'll never get back, people will become very candid. So while you're not your best self in every environment, every role is not a fit, every culture is not a fit, but do your best not to burn bridges and have someone in your industry who can speak negatively of you to someone else. So always do your best. If you're not competent in a role, seek ways to be competent or ask to be moved to other roles where you're a better fit if that is an option. But if you're out here pretending to do the work, somebody on the team knows, somebody sees it, somebody's probably upset. And so again, remember that and always try to be kind. Try to, you know, be honest and be kind. But this doesn't mean be nice or passive aggressive, but definitely, you know, you want to have some people that could speak very strongly for you as well. Um, and one of the questions I want to know below, if you're in the comments on YouTube or um, one of the podcasts that allows that, would you all like a session or a panel on how to be a reference? Like, do we need reference coaching? I know we talk about interview coaching, but there's never anyone that's like, here's how to be a good reference. Here's how to answer questions. Here's things to think about. Here's how to answer a question if you can't speak positively. Here's how to answer a question if, you know, you work in a state where you really can't give negative references. So, you know, definitely like let me know if that's something and maybe I'll invite some guests on or create a workbook or a tool to support that. In the link below, you all will actually be able to find a um, reference checking template. It covers some of the tips I shared here today, but most importantly, there's a template for how to text your reference or email your reference or what you would say if you give them a phone call to ask them if they are willing to be a reference for you, and then how to provide different information and backgrounds. So I hope you all find that to be a very useful tool. Um, and thank you so much for listening to this first episode of your Work Auntie podcast. I look forward to connecting with you all in the future. And remember, it's always in love. Take care. Mm -hmm.